Okay, so we have here the um, Biku Panda Lux LED upgrade kit, and I'm going to be doing it on my X1 Carbon. Anyone who owns one of these or P1S knows that the light, which is inside, isn't that great, which is just up the left here. So this one is going to sit up just at the top here. Um, it's got like a magnetic connection then we're going to open it up inside in there to be able to access the um, control board to be able to connect it all up you can still use the existing light and the new light but before we do that we need to remove all the AMS so I've got full access to the inside and then that's what we're going to do so just a quick tutorial on how to fit the <laughs> Biku Lux LED upgrade kit. It's long overdue. I don't know whether it's going to interfere with the LiDAR. There are some questions about that, but you know, ultimately the print quality on this is brilliant anyway. And that's what we're going to do now. So remove the AMS and the lid, and then we'll go from there. Okay, just to show you, this is the existing light. Um, like I said, we are going to be fitting just up here and in here is the control panel so you just want to undo that it's a bit fiddly but it should just come off um, we'll do that off camera and then go from there as you can see it just pops off and can't leave us over like that so the existing light is this one here We've got like a little control board that we need to connect up to that and then the new light needs to go into that and then the existing light needs to go into the new control board. It's, it's kind of like a loop. That way you still keep this particular light but you get the additional Lux light from Biku. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so what you get is the light itself which is magnetic. Um, you want to make sure that this wire goes towards the screen side. Uh, so that it reaches the control board and then you're literally just going to connect it up magnetically. It is quite easy to move about so hopefully the vibration shouldn't drop that onto the plate. That's not going to be good. Um, also in the box you have the connectors and the little board which obviously you need to use to connect up to the existing board. Um, this basically connects to this board and that board and brings them together and then creates the loop. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll give it a whirl. I'm going to turn it off now just to make sure that I'm not touching anything while it's live um, and we can go from there. So keep watching. So we're just going to disconnect this top wire here, which is the existing light. Um, it's probably going to be hot glued in, so just pull that out. There you go. We're still going to need that. That's still going to be um, used for the current setup. So what we want to do is, with this board here, we want to connect up to this wire that's the new light, and then we also want to connect up the existing light. So you will see this here. So we're going to put this one into the position that this used to be in so there's two different sides to it you've got the one with the clip then one of the smaller ones so we're going to put the smaller one in here just be very careful it's going to be quite fragile so you don't want to just force that in and make sure you get it the right way and then that just fits in so there is going to still be some of that hot glue so just remember that as well. So yeah, just fits in like so. Just push it into that board. There you go. And so that needs to now go into this board. But before we do that, just to make it slightly easier, let's connect, connect up the existing light, which was originally in there. 
So this is going to go into one of the smaller loops. They're fairly obvious which one goes into what. That fits into there like so. And then you want to connect up the um, new board and the old board together like so. And that fits into the larger connection, which like I say, fairly obvious. It's not got any instructions in it, but it literally just fits in like so. You hear it clip and then you want to fit the new light into one of the smaller connections. Once again, nice and easy. Make sure you get it the right way around. B way today's video sponsor. Why don't you check out their seventh project design contest? If you click on the link, it gives you details about how to participate, what sort of prizes and lots of information about timelines, etc. Um, also, if you head over to their main page, you can select PCB board prototyping, PC board assembly, FPC rigid flex, advanced PCBs, and they even do CNC and 3D printing and SMD stencils. If you click on that, it gives you an instant quote and you put in your specific requirements. And that is today's video sponsor, PCBWay.com. PCBWay. And then just pops in like so. Always a bit weary about connecting up to smaller connections like this because they're so fragile. So what we what we want to do is turn on the printer, make sure that all these connections are in the right place. So as you can see, took out the old light from this connection port, put in the supplied extension, connected into the little board, connected the new light into that board and the existing light into that board and that that creates that whole link. So let's just flick the switch and hopefully if we've got it right the first time, so it's just gonna load up, does all the initial checks, this light and this light should come on. And once that's done, we've, ah, there we go. So we have light, as you can see. So I'm not too keen on the fact that this is magnetic, but it's also good if you wanna sort of take it out but I'm gonna run some prints on this to make sure it doesn't drop. I think it would take quite a lot to pull that off. I mean, I'm not using excessive force to remove that, but nonetheless, it's still um, a little bit of an issue, but they did supply some 3M sticky coated tabs. It's quite possible that we could run one, two, three, four along there. That will make it more permanent, but I mean, leave a comment in the um, comment section as to whether you've done this already and this has been an issue especially at high speeds but on here we have like a little sticky tab what you want to do is stick it to this bottom so that it's kind of nice and tidy in there so that's what we're going to do now so you don't need to turn the printer off to do that now all the connections are made i always suggest not to be touching things out of the um side of caution um, we want to make sure that once you stick it in you can actually so we're going to do it like this so get in as far as possible and just stick it down like so um, and make sure that we can actually shut this without pinching the wires so just kind of make sure that they fit in nicely like that and then this should effectively shut quite nice I mean, that sticky thing's probably not that great, to be fair, but I don't think it really matters. I think as long as you're not forcing anything in there, just make sure all these wires aren't getting pinched again, like so. And then that should just pop shut. There we go. So it also supplies some sticky tape. This is just to protect the actual wire. Um, you can wrap it around this wire here because you don't really want any exposed wires in there through heat, especially if you're doing any sort of exotic filaments. So I would suggest wrapping it around there. Um, you could do that simply by taking this off like that. Um, let's face that down so it's not blaring the camera. So you literally just peel this off. Um, easier said than done, as always. 
like so and then just wrap it around this wire and what that does is just protects the wire you can wrap it around a few times potentially from it getting damaged whilst like moving parts are in there probably could have done this before I attached it may have made a bit more sense it looks a little bit untidy now but you know these videos are to learn as well as to guide um there we go it's it's, it's, it's probably not my best effort but um yeah so then put it back in tuck him up there just so that he's not gonna get snagged on the the head when it comes over to this corner um and that is it so as you can see we've got a bit better light now this light it does the job but if you're time lapsing, if you're doing any recording, if you want to keep an eye on your print and it's a bit dark, it's all controlled. These are linked now off that little control board that was supplied. Um, as you can see, if I touch the um, screen and turn it off, they both go off. So they are completely linked now. They're not independent. You've not had to do any soldering, any reconnections in terms of having to wire it up yourself. It's all supplied in that easy to use kit. And that kit was supplied by Biku Panda Lux LED upgrade kit. This is for the X1 Carbon, the P1 and the P1S. Give it a go, quite cheap. I will leave a link in the description. And if you wanna make your prints um, light up a bit better in terms of your printing of items and you want people to see your time lapses with a bit better quality then why not and while you're in there give it a bit of a clean up as you can see you do end up with quite a lot of debris and quite funny about having debris on these moving parts especially after a while they start snagging but that was phil from 3dp uk tech channel and that was the biku panda lux led upgrade nice and easy connect up magnetically if you want to stick you can in there is a little control board it's the top wire take that out be careful where that is hot glued in use the extension to connect into the existing into the control board light into the control board existing light into the control board pack it away cover up your wires probably do better than me and there we are nice and easy five minute job done much better that's Phil from 3DP UK Tech Channel. Three, two, one. one.